This is a BNX2 roughing wheel. Now they claim it can grind a variety of different materials and we're gonna put that to the test today. We've got aluminum, ink and nail, stainless steel, carbide, and ceramic. So our first grind, it's gonna be aluminum. Our aluminum part is indicated. Let's go ahead and get grinding. There it is, baby. Damn, that's a badass. So we're doing a traverse grind and it's gonna be going back and forth and we're feeding in from both sides. On our Centertron that we've already started grinding, we're traversing now, it's feeding down, spark out for half a second and then it's gonna traverse back across. Aluminum is really hard to grind. My experience with aluminum, it's it becomes gummy and stuff like that, and you really gotta have a really sharp wheel to really get up under and get a good finish on it. What we're doing is we're pushing this wheel to the max and seeing how fast it can remove material and how good of a finish we can actually get with it. All right, next up, ink and nail. 625 ink and nail, going in the chuck. Damn, boy, it scares shit me. I'm just kind of watching it right now. Ink and nails pretty hard to grind. I'm at 50% walking it in, but it's it's grinding pretty good. Grinding's a lot about, you know, hearing it and stuff like that. I mean, it's a rock. That's what I'm working with is a, a rock that happen to have diamonds in it. She sounds good and the Sensitron's good. <laughs> yeah, you see that? I almost fell off the dang thing. And we're feeding across at 22 inches a minute with ink and nail. So we're going 27 inches a minute. Hi, Jesse. <laughs> with the Studer configuration, you can set up multiple wheels. So you can get a VNX roughing wheel and then get an aluminum oxide finishing wheel and plunge down with the roughing wheel and change to the finishing wheel and finish it. I think Barry's going to get mad I stole his ink and nail from him. Last one. How she goes. That was 60 thousandths worth of ink and nail that just got removed in six and a half minutes. Hopefully she looks okay. Ink and nail's done. Let's go ahead and grind some stainless. Grinding stainless, take one. We we'll only kind of get one take. So with the aluminum and ink and nail part, it said we could grind down a thousand and a half per pass. But since this is stainless, we gotta slow that down. So we're grinding down seven tenths for the roughing cycle. Stainless can be ground with an aluminum oxide wheel. It can be ground fairly easily. But with this grinding wheel, it allows you to have one wheel for multiple parts and multiple materials so you're not constantly breaking down and setting up. We're all about reducing setup time and just getting the work in and getting the work out. And that's what this wheel allows us to do. Like always, we got a window full of oil because that coolant placement in between that pinch point between the wheel and the part, it's key in order to remove that swarf and keep our wheel cutting. Remember in traverse grinding, our spark out is how many times it goes across versus if we were doing a plunge grind, our spark out would be the dwell that that wheel sits on that part. There it is. That's yeah, our right Inspector there. Travis. You, you might know him from the old TV show, Titans of America. Titan America. Titan America Bill. There Titan America oh, Bill. Man. He's been here less time than you, man. I got one yeah. word wrong. <laughs> Stainless is done. Next up, carbide. Our carbide's indicated in. Let's go ahead and grind it. Bada bing, bada boom. Let's grind some carbide. I'm not being negative. I'm feeding off the energy. Yeah, I got Mark over there. I got Ben over there. I got two great beards. And I'm over here, can't even grow a mustache. With Studer technology, it allows us to put in the variables and it gives us a ballpark estimate on what types of feed we should be running. With carbide being as small as it is, we're running it a lot faster than we were the stainless or the ink canal. We're running at about 450 RPM. We're taking a thou and a half off each pass, and that's the max of what Terralit told us we can take for our roughing passes. So there's our spike of it feeding down, and our Sensitron's picking up a very good grind. We're traverse grinding at 30 inches a minute. That wheel is coming down, and it's shooting over 30 inches a minute and coming down again, and it's going all the way down. Something to keep in mind is that this is a roughing wheel. So we're still getting pretty good finishes. So we got about five more thousands to go. I wanted to show grinding carbide because carbide gets used a lot in the plating process and grinders are typically used to grind that down and produce a smooth finish. It's 40 thousandths off of carbide. Next up, ceramic. 
Ceramic's a very hard material that's difficult to machine. A lot of the times it gets ground. We just got a piece of ceramic and we're just doing a test grind on it to showcase this wheel. You can see since it's, it's tapered, you can see it starts a hitting on one side and not the other. So that's what we're checking for. We're feeding at 20 inches a minute. We're really pushing this wheel to its limits. Out of all the, God damn, what was that? That was my, stop hitting, Ben. Carbide and ceramic are one of the hardest to grind. We're gonna take about 18 thousandths off. But remember, there's 10 thousandths worth of taper. We're feeding at 20 inches a minute. I think it's grinding great. This is a great wheel. I mean, like, I'd buy it. If I had a manual grinder in my own shop or a CNC grinder in my own shop and I only had the capability to run one wheel at a time, it would be this wheel. I'd get a semi-finished wheel and do everything. Check that out. So first, let's talk about the aluminum. As you can see, we got a very beautiful finish compared to the rest of the bar stock and our VNX wheel did phenomenal at grinding it. Next up, let's check out the Inconel. 625 Inconel is very hard material, but our roughing wheel did a phenomenal job. As you can see from the bar stock, the finish doesn't look that good, but going from aluminum to Inconel to all these different types of materials really shows the capabilities of what that wheel can do. Let's take a look at the stainless. Y'all might recognize the bar stock from the dual diamond process form grind that we did recently, but let's take a look at this finish. So as you can see from the regular bar stock, we got a good grind on it, minimum chatter and a good finish for what a roughing wheel is capable of doing. Now let's look at the carbide. So we stole this from Barry's tool grinder, but I wanted to show you the versatility of the wheel. And it really shows the capabilities of what a grinder is used for. This type of process would be used for making ejector pins for mold cavities. And as you can see, you can really hog off a lot of material and make a lot of parts using minimum waste of your wheel. Diamond wheels tend to be a little bit more expensive than aluminum oxide wheels, but this wheel really balances out the cost to efficiency ratio. This piece of ceramic was used in a previous video using a peel grind method using a metal bonded diamond wheel, but we did it with a vetrified diamond wheel and it was able to not only grind the ceramic, but all different types of material as well. We really wanted to showcase using one wheel for a variety of different materials. I'm really happy with the results. We got a good finish on each one of these parts. And if you want to see more about the wheels that we have in house, make sure you check out that grinding academy and check out our wheel series. All right, guys, hope y'all like the process. Hopefully it brings a little bit more insight into what you can do in your grind shop. If you like what we're doing, make sure you check out our grinding academy for free educational content. We'll see you on the next one.